welcome to the Mass and Group of Churches and this service of Holy Communion for the 15th Sunday after Trinity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God. To, to whom, whom all hearts are open. open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, we, we have, have sinned against you and against, against our neighbour, in, in thought and word and deed. And deed. Through, through negligence, negligence through, through weakness, weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are, are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty who forgives all who truly repent. Have mercy upon you, pardon you, and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth, that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 16. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we? that you complain against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your full of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, 
as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered a world your glory veiled, not to be served but to serve, and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king, he calls us now to follow. as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. There in the garden of tears, my heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn, yet not my will but yours he said. King, he calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Come see his hands and his feet, the scars that speak of sacrifice. Hands that flung stars into space to cruel nails surrendered. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to So let us learn how to serve and in our lives enthrone him each other's needs to prefer for it is Christ we're serving. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to fall him to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. <clears throat> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idly in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, 
but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Many of Jesus' parables challenge what we call common sense. They turn upside down our accepted ideas of right and wrong. And often they leave us feeling uncomfortable in case we have to think too much or change too much or rearrange the way we live our lives at home or at work or in church. None is more challenging than the one we read today. The background is the Roman occupation and legislation, which drove many small farmers and crofters off their lands. They were forced to join the cheap labour of the unemployed. <laughs> I remember a conversation I had years ago with an elderly retired docker when I was working in Southampton. He told me of the anticipation of being picked or the humiliation of being passed over at the dockside, of how glad he was that he was tall and well built, how men would stand shivering with the flu or sick with TB and try to appear strong. They'd watch the foreman pick the strong and tall and healthy looking for a day's work. Those not picked would rush to the next dock for the next choosing to begin. It was a harsh system, making no allowance for health or need or accident. This man spoke with tears in his eyes of the good men who felt humiliated and crushed by a system that treated them like cattle and valued them by muscle, not by loyalty, patience or ability. That sort of system prevailed at the time of Jesus. His hearers would have known that workers were to be hired for the vineyard, for the pruning or weeding or the precious harvest. They'd stand tall, praying to be hired. A contract was agreed. The agreement was the wage for the full day. Those not hired would stand dejected until the next landowner came along. Maybe then they jostle for position, show off their muscles. Sometimes an unscrupulous farmer will bargain to have the work done at a lower rate, three quarters of a day for half a day's pay. It is, after all, the market economy. But this farmer returned only after only three hours and offered to pay a fair wage. At noon he did the same. And again at three in the afternoon, after the heat of the day had passed. Then almost unbelievably, he went back a last time, with only one hour of daylight left. Was it because the harvest was rich and ready and had to be brought in at all costs? Or was it because he had compassion upon the unemployed? The deals were struck. And at the end of the day, they lined up. The steward was told to make them line up in reverse, the last in, the first to receive the money. Done deliberately, so that the first there could see what had happened. Highly provocative. If I'd been the landowner, I'd have paid off the first lot first, 
and then the last ones in could have had a nice and secret surprise. So the steward lined them up in reverse, the last in, the first paid. And when the money was handed out, it wasn't for one hour's work, but for a whole day. What went on in their minds? A mistake? Madness? Pay packets mixed up? Did they stand in disbelief or take the money and run? The next people in had the same generosity shown. Perhaps by now, those who had been engaged at noon or nine in the morning or at daybreak were beginning to think of bonuses. Surely that would make sense. In a measured way, they were all given a day's pay. The last to be paid, those who had worked longest and hardest, received what had been agreed in the contract. Not surprisingly, as they took their money, they grumbled to the employer. These latecomers have only done an hour's work, while we've sweated the whole day long in the blazing sun. The owner turns and says, Friend, I'm not being unfair to you. You have the wage we agreed. Take your pay and go home. I can do what I like with my own money. I choose to be kind. Don't be jealous. It's a hard story. Think first of those hired at the end of the day. Think of their despair at the thought of going home empty-handed. The reality would have been of mouths to feed and not enough money to pay for basic bread. What is it like to know that your children cry with hunger? Plenty in the world today know what that is like. Some of you may have known hardship in childhood, but most of us have plenty in the house. It may not be elaborate, but it is there. These men must have been overwhelmed after their failure to secure a job, to be given a whole day's pay. Their expectation of grief, their sense of failure, turned to joy. Think of the delight of being able to fill stomachs with plain, simple food, and have oil in the lamp, and hope and strength for the next day. A story echoes the tale of the Hebrew people in the wilderness, gasping for bread, thinking longingly of Egypt, where they weren't hungry, but they were slaves. How selective their memory was. They couldn't face the hardness of hunger. Then God meets their need, without ration or reason. Bread rained in on them from heaven. Quails fly in exhausted and drop at their feet. They have meat for the evening and bread for breakfast, all given to them from God's free love. In the same way, the labourers could go home rejoicing, holding their heads high. This story reminds us yet again of the free, glorious love of God. Here isn't an angry God, nor a stern taskmaster, but a God whose judgment is love. If you, grieving for what you are, or what you have done, judge yourself harshly, stop. God doesn't judge you. No matter what you've done, no matter what mess you think you're in, God forgives you. No matter how you judge yourself, God's answer is to pour out love and grace and forgiveness and more love. God's love is unconditional. But the ones who worked through the heat of the day were angry. I should have felt the same. Either these others should get less or we get bonuses. But to get the same, isn't fair. What a shop-keeping attitude we have in the church and the world. 
everything to be measured and rationed and quantified. This story isn't about the shopkeeping morality we use in our everyday life. It's about the nature of God, the mystery of God's dealings with us, about what is called grace. The love of God, pouring out into our poor, dry, shriveled lives. Pouring out so that we are loved and accepted and forgiven. It doesn't rely on us being good or coming to church or leading moral and upright lives. It comes from the heart of God to our deepest need. It comes from the heart of God into our deepest sinfulness. It comes from the heart of God and sets us free. God's unbounded generosity is for all of us. All of us are given that waterfall of love, that avalanche of mercy and kindness and acceptance and forgiveness that we call grace. Abundant grace. There will be enough for the day. Enough strength, enough hope, enough courage, enough grace for today. We can't store grace in a cupboard as we store a packet of tea. For today there is enough. It doesn't mean that we'll be magically free of trouble or sorrow or anxiety or suffering. But it does mean that for today we shall have overflowing grace. Let us pray. Let us come with openness to express our concerns for the church and the world, to the God of love and understanding. Loving Father, Whenever we start to get offended by your generosity or open-mindedness, help us to change and join your rejoicing. Help us to be happy when others do well and not to be jealous. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, increase in us love not only for those who suffer in this world, but also for those who cause the suffering. We pray for a change of heart and attitude and an awakening to a better way of living and the courage to reject wrong principles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, may our closeness to family and friends make us never exclusive, shutting others out, but always inclusive, welcoming others in. Encourage us in outgoing hospitality and keep us from becoming possessive with those we love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all offenders in prison, that on release they will not reoffend but find enough support to start a new life in the community. We pray for all who are vulnerable and unable to cope with the demands of life, for alcoholics, drug addicts, and all who are sick in mind. We pray for proper, loving help for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died alone, unmourned and unnoticed. We pray for all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving Father, thank you for helping us to pray. Deepen our loving so that as we pray through this week, we may do it with your heart merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. We are all one in unity with Christ. 
May we remain together in peace, friendship and love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exhorted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave it. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power 
be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. Amen. O Lord, your church, with your perpetual mercy. And because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, Father of all, we give, give you thanks, thanks and, and praise, praise that when, when we, we were still, still far off, you, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And, and the whole earth, earth live to praise your name, name through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you go out into the world, may you be thankful for the gifts and opportunities that you have been given by God's grace. May you use these gifts in the furtherance of God's kingdom on earth and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ, Amen. Thank you for joining us. Please keep an eye on the parish website, massimparishes.org, to see what other services and events are coming up. And God bless you. Thank you.